desire to adorn them with decoration, to mark them as products of human design and not just constructed, not just merely constructed. So these go back to Neolithic times at least. Um, you know, there are a lot of theories about this stuff, we, about why we do this. I mean, it's an old act of communication. But, you know, why, why do we have this natural affinity for patterns? Well, one theory says that that's an evolutionary adaptation, which is kind of an interesting theory. The idea is that we have a very deep-seated uh, perceptual ability to detect symmetry. Why would we have that? Well, the theory goes that uh, you're out for a stroll in the savanna and you spot a saber-toothed tiger, because, you know, a million years ago. If the saber-toothed tiger is in profile, not symmetric, you're relatively safe. Tiger's going off in that direction. If the saber-toothed tiger is symmetric, then that's a danger sign, right? That, so it's natural to see why we might have evolved the capacity to detect symmetry very quickly. And that may be developed into an overall capacity for seeing patterns and for admiring them. So uh, now if we go forward a few uh, millennia, we find a trend, one of the greatest cultural uh, creations of geometric art, of symmetric art, happened in Islamic culture, particularly around the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries. It grew gradually up from, say, the 8th century and ebbed, started ebbing in the 15th century. But we see these incredible works of geometric art. Uh, you know, as the Islamic artisans were famous for a few forms of art. If you look at the image on the left, you see uh, the expression of calligraphy in a very geometric form. So all of, that, all of those patterns over there are actually writing in a style called square kufik. Uh, Islamic artisans were also famous for stylized floral motifs, like you see on the, uh, the part of the dome that's in that picture. Uh, they were also well known, maybe most famous, for the kind of patterns you see on the right, geometric motifs made out of stars, interlaced arrangements of lines that delineate stars and other shapes. And that's a, it's a beautiful topic, and you can find these things all over the world. You can find Islamic art stretching from southern Spain all the way across southern Europe and northern Africa, into the Indian subcontinent, the Middle East, and Southern Asia, because that was the area that was under Islamic rule for a time. Uh, so this, this practice of art spread to all those parts of the world. And the tradition is a very interesting. I mean, why did they have this strong tradition of geometric design? Well, one theory says that Islam has a prohibition on uh, representation. So you're not allowed to draw animal forms. You're not allowed to draw people. That's not strictly true. Islamic artists did draw miniature portraits of people and animals. But in a religious setting, at least, it's, it, there's some suggestion that, yes, they wanted to restrict themselves to pure abstract designs. So moving to some other parts of the Islamic world, this is uh, perhaps one of the most famous monuments of Islamic art. It's the Alhambra, which is a palace in southern Spain, uh, a Moorish palace. And you can find it's just packed with these designs, both the floral designs and the calligraphy, and especially the Islamic star patterns. Uh, there's a totally separate tradition that grew up in Morocco. So these are a, 